Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tuesday, March 10th, 2015, town board meeting is called to order. First item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Supervisor Clint, I think, will lead us this evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Item two, approval of agenda for the meeting. Any changes? Hearing none. Item three, approved minutes from February 4th, 10th, 2015, teleboard meetings. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of February 4th and February 10th, 2015 town board meetings. Motion bill, second. No, second. Dan, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 I have an aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Item four is a public comment period. People wishing to address this board will be limited to two minutes each with a uh, public comment period listed to a total maximum of 30 minutes. Anybody wishing to speak to the board this evening before we start our regular agenda? Go ahead, Mr. Ron Head. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I think I'm in favor of whatever is under item 13 and 14, but I'm not <laughs> sure. And I might have some discussion on that. Maybe I could uh, offer that during the discussion. If, you, but, um, if it affects you, I'll uh, allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and and uh, at, at public comment period at the end of last meeting, first, I appreciate that being there. I, I, I think that's great to be there. You got some candid feedback, and I hope that was good. I hope you appreciated that. I hear a lot of candidates say, a lot of... Um, officers or supervisors, whatever, elected positions say, hey, we never get feedback. I talked to Krug on, on, over, on uh, Zerfu's program on, on uh, Tuesday, I guess it was, or Monday, and, and on this right to work issue, he says uh, he represents 50-some thousand, and Bill probably got the number, he probably copied it down, he represents 50-some thousand constituents, and he had 540 comments on that issue. And he's asking for it, so. But I, I hope it was good feedback for you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else wish to speak to the board? Hearing none, call the public comment period closed. Move on to the regular agenda items then. Motion uh, from uh, departments. First, uh, Fire Chief Don Bowen. Good evening, town board. Citizens. Uh, for last month, uh, the fire department responded to uh, 31 calls for service. Those 31 calls consisted of 20 EMS calls. Uh, we had five motor vehicle accidents. I don't know, everybody kept, uh, kept running into each other last month, but uh, we did have a couple fairly serious accidents in the, in the town and uh, neighboring townships, so um, we did respond to those. Uh, we had two carbon monoxide calls. Uh, those kind of run in streaks, sometimes we get uh, uh, very seldom do we actually find carbon monoxide, but if your detector goes off, you know, there's, we have, we have a hard time tracking down where it's coming from, but we can tell you if it is in your home. So, uh, you know, just want to let people know that carbon monoxide detectors do have a shelf life. Typically, the cheaper they are when you buy them, the shorter their shelf life. Uh, you can expect five to six years out of the cheaper models. Uh, some of them are seven, eight years. There's sensors in them that do go bad. So I guess they, they're like everything else in life. They don't last forever. So if you're starting to have issues, they usually have directions on the back to tell you what the sequence of codes that are beeping are. But uh, if you're in doubt, call us and we will come and make sure that you uh, don't have a, an issue in your house. Uh, we did have uh, one mutual aid call to uh, do standby for the city of Wisconsin Rapids when they had a uh, structure fire at a, an apartment complex. Uh, that we were put on standby to cover all of their uh, area if they had any other calls, which they, this time they did not. So, And then we had uh, a false alarm down into uh, the town of Saratoga in the Kusha's coverage area that we got canceled on uh, en route. 
and we had two mutual aid calls up to the village of Barron. Uh, they, neither one of them were active fires, but uh, we were called out to the same to determine what the needs were up there. Our training for the month, uh, our EMS is doing some hazmat awareness uh, training and stuff. Uh, they get called out. You never know for sure what you're going into. Uh, there are things, uh, even in residential areas and stuff, that we need to be aware of so we don't walk into something and uh, not be able to walk back out. So they're doing that and going over just some general protocols of the uh, EMS uh, with the United Service. Uh, on the fire side of things, we'll be doing our annual wildland uh, forest fire uh, training. Obviously this week is uh, starting to let us know that we can see the ground again. The spring is typically the biggest forest fire area or session of the year uh, when things are still dried out from all winter and uh, aren't greened up. With that, the DNR is uh, requiring as of this afternoon to uh, get burning permits for doing burning. The snow cover is too sporadic that the uh, winter rules are no longer in, in effect. So uh, if you have something you need to burn, you have to follow the normal protocol of getting the burning permits and uh, things like that so you don't get visits from whether it be the fire department or the DNR. And public relations, uh, we got a few things going on this month. We have a uh, um, blood drive. The Blood Center of Wisconsin has been doing blood drives here uh, about eight weeks or so. Uh, it's on Tuesday the 17th, I believe that's St. Patty's Day. Uh, so from 8.30 to 12.30, if anybody's interested in donating blood, they're a good organization to donate it to. So stop by the fire station during that period. You can call and uh, make appointments if it's uh, easier to help you get in and out with your schedule. Or you can just walk in the door and they typically will fit you in. Uh, the Easter egg hunt is uh, its just into next month, but uh, I wanted to discuss it. Uh, we have our annual Easter egg hunt. We were trying to decide how long that's been hosted, and it was there long before me, so that's 31 years plus. So, 1978. 1978 is when we started hosting the, the Easter egg hunt. Uh, it will be at Mid-State Tech again this year. Uh, worked out a lot better last year. We moved it over there so we have better parking uh, facilities for people uh, and hopefully all the snow is gone so we can hide the eggs in the woods a little bit to, for the children to find. So uh, we're going to be out soliciting donations for uh, some of the candy and the prizes and stuff that are uh, required for that. So, And we did make contact and the Easter Bunny is lined up to be there. So. Uh, other than that, I did attend a, a juvenile fire setters program uh, training up in Marshfield last week. Um, it was a program that had been active a bunch of years ago. It's uh, a program that gets put into place when children have the tendency to play with matches, different stuff like that. And uh, we try to get some intervention into their lives to uh, stop them from getting into things that can get out of control and they can't... Uh, can't take back. So uh, we had a couple days of training. It's uh, quite elaborate uh, with the uh, uh, human or human resources, or not human resources, human services and stuff to get counselors and get the people necessary to, to help the youth of the area uh, get back. So if we do have fires that are known to be set by uh, children or if, you know, if the tendencies are out there, somebody starts being caught playing with the lighters and things like that. We try to step in and get them some uh, education and training prior to it becoming uh, an issue that uh, you know can be devastating. Like I said, it sometimes it uh, starts out as a lighting a little grass fire outside and turns into a bedroom fire. So we, we try to uh, stay up on that. Hopefully we can get the program countywide uh, up and running. Uh, so we'll have different areas, different fire departments that will uh, have people that can mentor these children into uh, not having things that can uh, affect them for the rest of their lives. Uh, a lot of it even gets into uh, something that law enforcement deals with a lot is these bottle bombs and stuff that they make. They think it's uh, you know kind of a joke, it's a prank. A lot of the stuff you see on YouTube that it's, uh, you know, it starts out as a prank and goofing around, but unfortunately the ATF doesn't always see it that way. And, uh, you know, children can really harm their lives by being involved in these, what they perceive as harmless pranks, but they get involved with 
criminal activities, charges because of the activities that they uh, are considered explosive. So try to try to mentor some children to uh, not have that pitfall happen in their life. So. And other than that, I covered the burning permits, so that's all. Any questions of the chief? Betty? Yeah. Uh, where, where and how can they do the donations for the Easter egg hunt? Uh, I guess I've got uh, you know three or four of the firemen that are going around. Uh, they can drop something off at the office here. Uh, the girls in the office can get it to me, or they can drop it off in my office. Uh, if any, you know, we hit, we don't hit every business in town, but anybody that's interested, uh, Typically, a monetary donation. Uh, we do have some. If they have prizes and stuff like that, we will accept those. If it's something that's, you know, something that we can hand back out to the children and stuff, uh, uh, gift cards and things of that nature. Uh, but otherwise, we do purchase a lot of candy and obviously some, you know, prizes and stuff that we purchase at Walmart, stuff like that. So. And they make the checks out to. They can make the check out to the Grand Rapids Easter Egg Hunt, and uh, the treasurer can forward that or. Uh, cash if you want and we can get your receipts or whatever necessary. So. Thank you. But that is a, it's a fun event. It, it, it takes about 10 minutes to clean up. But. <laughs> William? Yes. Um, John, you had the Police and Fire Commission. Uh, could you just talk about, I, I, I learned some things at that meeting, on the uh, demo trailer that you talked about, the restoring of that? Uh, I guess we're in the early stages of our, our fire safety trailer. Uh, we're looking at uh, the one that we currently have that's owned by the uh, Wood County Chiefs Association. I believe it's 18 years old now. It's starting to show some wear and tear. It's the one that we have at the home show uh, that we take kids through, teach them about fire safety, fire prevention, stuff like that. It's starting to show its age, so uh, I've been working with an area uh, business that is hopefully going to be uh, getting this kicked off in the next couple months that we'll be doing some corporate uh, soliciting to uh, come up with the donations to get a new trailer that hopefully is gonna serve us for the next 15, 20, 25 years. It's a little more high tech, like everything else in our lives is getting more high tech, but it really keys on teaching people how to get out of houses, how not to, uh, you know, if you can't put the fire out right away, you need to get out of the house. Uh, but it's very realistic. It's got a lot of uh, infrared heating and stuff that if you're not being successful with the use of the laser driven uh, fire extinguishers and stuff, the smoke starts coming at you, the heat starts building up and stuff, and it's very, very realistic. Uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully within, you know, I guess we kind of set a goal of within a year, hopefully we can come up with the, the funding to uh, come up with this. The current one was 100% uh, funded by the Home Builders Association was a very big part of the first one and uh, hopefully we'll uh, get the support of the businesses in the surrounding area to come up with a, a replacement for it. You, you put a price on it of $146,000? Yeah, that's yeah. tentatively, uh, I guess that also includes the insurance. Uh, you got about $1,000 a year just to insure the trailer and stuff like that. So the couple we've been working with had suggested that if we're gonna raise the money for it, we re raise the money all up front to handle the maintenance for it for a 20 year period, the insurance premiums that would be needed to be paid so we don't have to, three years into it, go around and start trying to come up with money for keeping it through. Uh, and we also don't want it to fall into disrepair. The one we currently have, like you say, we had to do some fixing up on it last year, but it's basically a camper. So it's got the same camper leaky roof problems as as everybody's mm -hmm. campers have. So. I, I, I attended a Firewise meeting about two years ago in Madison, and there was insurance companies talk, and they indicated that, you know, things like this, that if anybody ever wanted grants, the best place to go is to insurance companies. Yep, we're definitely going to be keying in on some of them. Uh, like I said, they're, they're the ones that pay out the claims when the fires get out of control, and I guess, you know, it's more... You know, we, we can always, we always tell everybody you can replace a building, you can't replace a life. And uh, the with the building construction now, the UL labs are saying that a current, a new constructed house is burning anywhere from six to eight times faster than an old house did. With everything in the houses are made out of plastics and glues and composites and stuff like that. And that's why they're pushing for us to really press to teach people how to get out of the house, 
as fast as possible. Uh, you know, the old days of having your escape route and having your buddy meet you out and stuff like that, it's important, but they said you need to get out of these houses. They just, they go up so fast and the smoke levels are so toxic that, uh, you know, it's scary when you see how fast, how fast the house burns down to the ground now, so. But everything is, like you say, it's either glues or composites or plastic, so. All right, any other questions, Dan? You got one? Don, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but obviously it is campaign season, and we've been out uh, talking to the residents, and a few of them have, have asked me about this plan from the fire department of uh, hiring six full-time firemen and putting up a second station. Can you shed any light on that or, or help, you know, so we can... Uh, Sure, I can shed all kinds of light on it. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no truth to either part of it. Uh, that's as truthful as it can be. The, uh, the issue of a fire station out in Saratoga got brought up when the developers around the Nepco Lake area had indicated that they were looking at building a substation for the Port Edwards Fire Department in that area that is right now the village of Port Edwards. And I suggested that if that were to occur, that we look at possibly doing a joint substation where we would both operate out of it, and that would increase the ISO rating for the community of Saratoga that we service in part of our service contract. If that doesn't occur, it doesn't occur. It's just a good opportunity for two communities to work together to save some people that are paying insurance rate, you know, premiums. Anything beyond five miles of our station is considered unprotected according to your insurance companies, and it's an opportunity. The five mile mark is basically town line and 13. So anything farther out, they're paying some very high insurance rates. So it was an opportunity. Whether it ever happens, don't know. That was a suggestion. And as far as hiring six full-time people, there's a lot of communities in this state that are going to daytime, part-time, temporary positions because they don't have any volunteers during the daytime shifts. These are predominantly bigger deep, you know, cities that are on the outskirts of Milwaukee, Madison, Appleton, stuff like that. No matter where they're at, the volunteer departments struggle on daytime calls with getting staffing. Everybody works day shift. We don't have the, the nighttime or the, the shift workers that we used to have. Currently, I have 56 members on the fire department. 26 of them don't even live in our town. They live whether it's in the city of Rapids or uh, Saratoga or the town of Grant. And you know we struggle with getting people active, and that's what a lot of municipalities are being forced to go to is to have an assurance of having somebody on a day shift. They put a part, a temporary, or not a temporary, a part-time people with no benefits that they have a, a staff on during the daytime when nobody else is around. In the evenings and weekends, typically the volunteer service can come up with the staff that we need. Mm -hmm. So I said someday in the future. Would that have to occur? Maybe it will. Uh, right now, we have a few people around. We can rely on mutual aid, but to, to assemble 25 people on a day shift, it's not gonna happen with one department anymore. Um, so like I said, there's a lot of planning of things that could occur in the future, but to put on full-time people has never been you know, even discussed. And like I said, there's a lot of things that can occur long before municipalities are forced to go to full-time staff. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's the first step, is that they look at putting on part-time people. And unfortunately, that only you know, covers you if you can find those people. And the other thing that was brought up is I said, obviously, our department, our community isn't that busy. We have fire calls, we have stuff that occurs during the day. Typically, they're in the southern Wood County area, there aren't a lot of multiple that we have a fire going at the same time, Rome has a fire at the same time, Nakusa has a car accident going on. So I said, yeah, would an idea of putting on a regional response crew that would cover the entire Southwood County be something that'd be feasible someday in the future, long before we end up going to a full-time department? I guess, you know, I'm trying to plan for the future of this community. If that makes me a bad chief, then I guess I'm a bad chief. But no, there has absolutely never been one discussion of going to a full-time staff of any. All right, any other questions, the chief? Mr. Head. <clears throat> At the Police and Fire Commission on the 3rd, you, off and you offered some ISO 6, ISO 8 savings 
for the town of Grand Rapids. I got that down here, I, I, but you probably got that memorized, I guess. Sure. And, the, ISO, and a, the ISO system is what insurance companies base your homeowner's insurance on. The insurance industry is somewhat changing how they operate. They don't rely strictly on the ISO rating, which is a rating system for a fire department. They rely on it heavily in the commercial area. The personal property insurance stuff, a lot of stuff is getting factored in, such as your, your credit rating is a major thing that the insurance companies look at you when they determine what you're gonna pay for your homeowner's insurance. But the ISO rating is still factored in there. There's significant differences as to what you're gonna pay in the community as a whole based upon the performance of the fire department. It's a system, they come in, they evaluate what we have for equipment, what we have for responses, what we have for people that show up on the calls, what we do for training. It's a, a book about that thick that's in my office of so the last time we did a test. And uh, a, a six is what we're rated at right now, which is the lowest we can go without having a municipal water system, which I don't really envision us ever having a water system in Grand Rapids. So, uh, like you said, there are some significant insurance rating savings by having a fire department that is willing to, you know, that's able to perform at a certain level. If the community doesn't want us to stay at that level, they make that decision. And like I said, unfortunately, the insurance premiums will reflect that. And the scary part about the insurance rating is once your insurance, once the ISO rating goes up, it takes five years before you can retest to try to get it back down. Because you have to prove, you have to have a, ha a track record of how many people are responding, how many, you know, your training, what your equipment and stuff is. So there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, there was a lot of work that went into the planning many years ago to get our rating down to what it was. When I first started on the department, we were a nine. Mm -hmm. which is one step above not unprotected in the insurance company's rating. So, you know, we're as low as we can go. So this is this is what I had down here. Tell me if I'm wrong on this. But the, the lower the ISO rating, the better. Correct. The, we, we, got, we, we were an eight, we got to a six. Correct. We got to a six by having an aerial truck. We got to a six by a combination of improvements on our backup engine, which is when we bought engine three. We needed to have a backup engine that met current NFPA standards. So with that purchase, along with the aerial truck that was purchased in 2008, is what we purchased prior to doing the testing because we needed to have the elevated master stream is what that truck provides for us. That's the, the thing that got the enough points to get the rating from a seven to a six. We made it by, I think it was six points that we had extra to spare. So. Um, and, and it was just one of the components necessary to get that rating down to a six. Okay. And you said, you already said that the ISO is of a six is the lowest we can go without a municipal water system. Correct. And, and you also said that the difference between an ISO rating eight and an ISO rating a six is $748,000 in annual savings to Grand Rapids and insurance premiums. That is what the data from the ISO that... Okay we received on a community valued at the value of the town of Grand Rapids, which is roughly $500 million. That is what the significant, you know, what the savings that the insurance companies say that everybody, every municipal, you know, every, every business owner, every property owner, when you combine that all together, what the difference in savings on insurance premiums is annually. All right, one more question, Shirley? Yeah, I contacted my insurance company and um, they're saying that they don't go so much by that ISO number anymore. What they what they more they do more so now is how far you are from a fire department. And what they do is pretty much take it take they take an average or they look at um, like how many floods are in the area. Uh, do you have a lot of tornadoes, you know, or other disasters like that? That's what they're kind kind of basing their um, you know, premiums uh, on, so. And I believe that's what I said to start with. Well, I mean, and, like I said, and I said the ISO, I, uh, Mr. Hett just said that it's saving Grand Rapids residents 700 and some thousand dollars. I disagree with that. 
you're entitled to yeah I, I, because you know like i said i contact the, the, more and more of the insurance companies are that's the route that they're going so you know i, 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 mean, I can't control how they do their policies that's why i stated when i started that the insurance companies in the residential realm are not using it as heavily because they're looking at the factors of the person themselves that live there their personal habits their uh, uh, credit ratings and stuff like that. So, but it's, All right. Any other it's questions? If not, we'll uh, move on to the safety report. Nothing to report. Good. Safety was good. No, no. All right. You're excused. Uh, Police Chief uh, Peterson. Peterson. Good evening, everyone. Town board. Uh, real quickly here. For the month of February, the uh, police department handled uh, 283 calls for service. Uh, in February of 2014, we handled 367 calls for service, so that's about a 23% decrease in calls. And the town board, they have a, a breakdown of those of those calls. Uh, 14 written warnings were issued, uh, six municipal ordinance citations, and 37 traffic citations were issued during the month of February. Uh, February 8th through February 11th, I attended the uh, uh, Wisconsin Chiefs of Police Association, their 2015 Wisconsin Police Leadership Foundation uh, Midwinter Training Conference uh, in the Wisconsin Dells. Uh, it, again, the conference was well attended by uh, all Chiefs of Police and other law enforcement executives throughout the state. Uh, they had some real good quality uh, training seminars, uh, their their law updates again was uh, outstanding. So it uh, is a very worthwhile conference. And just as kind of a side note, if anybody has uh, an opportunity, I think Dave Anderson from Famous Dave. If you ever have an opportunity to hear him speak, go listen to him speak. He's uh, pretty amazing. You wouldn't you wouldn't think of it, but uh, he's he's pretty amazing to listen to. On uh, Wednesday, February 18th, uh, I met with uh, Mid-State Technical College staff and representatives of other law enforcement agencies for their uh, outlying campuses, uh, primarily Marshfield and Stevens Point. And uh, they're looking at, uh, uh, or taking a look at their future security needs for all their campuses. Uh, it's very early in the exploratory stages for them, uh, but they want, they're taking a look at uh, how they want to uh, look at their security needs here going forward in the, in the near future. Uh, vehicles are all doing well. The new, new squad is up and operating and uh, running real well. And once again, if anybody ever wants to meet with me or stop in and say hi, uh, I'm right here and willing to do that. Questions of the chief? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, yeah, of course, you were also at the Police and Fire Commission. I just wanted to have one question was on new hirees. Uh, uh, you're going to revalue them, psychological evaluation or something like that? Is yes. that something you come to the board with, or is that something you decide yourself? That, that would be a re recommendation that uh, that should come from the Police and Fire Commission that on any new hires, currently the way we're doing it, we're, they're only doing psyche valves on, on full-timers, but uh, uh, my contention is we should be doing it on anybody that we put on the street, even for part-timers, uh, because they're just as vulnerable or out there, just like any full-timer, maybe not as often, but it's still, I think it would be in the best interest in the town that we do psych evaluations on all, uh, whether they're full-time or part-time officers. Could, could, could that be in the RFP for recruiting new ones that say you have to have this before you become a part-timer? Uh, absolutely, that would become a part of that when uh, in the announcements or so most, most, most departments have that already, so. I think in the past, Mel, we've had occasion where we've, uh, we've shared part-timers with other communities, 
and uh, sometimes the other community may have already done the psyche value on would you only do would you accept that one then or would you a absolutely if if they're already working whether it be full-time or part-time mm -hmm. for another agency and they're also coming to work for us uh, part-time then uh, yeah, we could look, take a look at uh, waiving that. Obviously, we wouldn't be able to find out any details, I'm sure, of, of that report, but uh, at least having the reassurance that one was done and they passed it, uh, that, that, that would suffice. One, one more. Um, one of the things that's a tragedy that just recently happened in Madison, yes, uh, and, and, and listening to it, um, on the radio or on the news said that they sure would have been nice to have body cams at that time. I know it's been discussed here and, and with the police department, but well, just I don't know how to ask you this question, but do you think that a body cam would have been very helpful in that situation? Uh, <laughs> everything I've been reading and, and researching so far, because it's, yeah, it's absolutely something that I'm looking into. Uh, it can save save your hide, or it can destroy you. Destroy you too. So, uh, you know, you always hear about the instances where the body cam, you know, helped an officer in in, in, in a situation. You know. It could be something as minor as a traffic stop or something as major as a, as a shooting. But then there's the other stories that you probably don't hear about a lot where it jammed the officer up too. Uh, uh, I think initially I was a little reluctant, but I think since everything, since just in the last year and how many months since I've been here, I think I'm turned around on that, so it's something I'm looking at and, and uh, uh, hope to pursue going forward at some point. Okay, any other questions? Yes, Shirley? Yeah, um, Chief, is the Grand Rapids Police Department considered a 24-7 uh, department? I consider it a 24-7, yes. I, as much as possible, I try to keep some one of our officers on duty, okay? if if. If that can't be done because I have an officer, a full-time officer that's off, or and I don't have a part-time officer to fill that that uh, uh, shift, or myself fill that shift, uh, then obviously we would, you know, have to rely on uh, uh, Wood County Sheriff's Department for coverage. Uh, I don't. I think so far this year we've had any open shifts. Uh, they were minimal. I don't know how it compares to, to past years, but I, I think last year we were minimal in the number of open shifts we had. And sometimes it even may be for a short period, uh, maybe a couple hours uh, when we couldn't fill it, uh, find somebody to come in for just a couple hours. Uh, at the end of a shift or maybe beginning of the shift, but from from my aspect, uh, I, yes, I consider us a 24/7 because the with full-time staff we have full-time officers that are assigned to shift, excluding vacation time, comp time, sick leave, things like that. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. You may uh, sit. Uh, we're going to have a short presentation from the uh, part of Wisconsin Community Leadership, uh, which is proposing a project that uh, goes through some of the uh, area of Grand Rapids, although the uh, property that they're looking at it is actually within the city of Wisconsin Rapids. Um, <laughs> All right, so we'll give you about uh, 20 minutes. Short less. <laughs> It's uh, too nice outside, so I want to get done with the outside. Uh, I've been in an office all day. So. Um, but no, actually, this is all in the town. So it's city owned. But we'll, city owned, but within the town. We'll get into that. So, um, anyhow, i just go through uh, some quick introductions. Um, this is a, a project team. The project team, the Heart of Wisconsin, has a community leadership program. Uh, and what the program entails, it's uh, we've 
eight, uh, eight sessions once a month um, where we, gosh, we've, we've gone through local um, you know, educational uh, you know, tours at Mid-State, um, Mead School, uh, local businesses, uh, government offices, um, we're doing a community tour of, uh, well, they haven't quite told us where next year, or next month. Um, been in jail? We have yeah, been, we've been, been in the jail. jail. <laughs> the lovely jail food. Um, but the, 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 basically the, the program, and it's been going on for, gosh, I mean, 15 plus years or so, 20 years, um, is uh, a way to get uh, community uh, members uh, involved um, and familiar with uh, Kind of the, I guess, the ins and outs of the community, um, so to speak. Um, you know, who's you know, leaders and that sort of thing. Um, and then also uh, to then, basically, hopefully, uh, spur uh, new community leaders to uh, come forward. Um, so anyhow, enough about that. The, the big part of the uh, the program, though, is there is a, a project um, that uh, that we are developing, and um, it's part of the course, and it. There's been um, like the Winter Sports Fest that has been held down at Winterfield. That was one of the projects that came out of it. Probably heard about the bridge lighting. Um, that was another project that came out of this. Uh, those canoe, the canoe kayak launch down by um, across the street from uh, uh, like the movie theater down that way. Mm -hmm. That was another one of these projects. So there's a lot of projects that you probably see around that you didn't even realize were part of this. So. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, our group, uh, I to introduce myself, uh, Justin Connor, all familiar to you guys, uh, your Planning Commission Chair, uh, Keller Knight Snowmobile Club Vice President, uh, worked for Wood County, you, you, I don't need to go any further with all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I'm Leanna Olson, and I live on the other side of town, towards Vesper, um, and I work at Verso, I've had 26 years in, in forestry there, so... This has definitely been an eye-opener, knowing and learning so much about the city. Um, it's been fun. Tara Cutter, um, I live in Grand Rapids, and I currently work at Wood Trust. And I'm Paula Berger, and I live in uh, Grand Rapids, and I've grown up here. I think I, I saw Nat Rainke come in, I'm Paula Piper. <laughs> I used to live right by you. A little bit. Um, and I actually was working for New Page up until Verso took over, and so now I'm trying to figure out what to do with the rest of my life. Anyone we need somebody? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she can be a building inspector. Okay. Um, so, anyway. Um, so I said, part of this uh, the leadership program is uh, to develop a, a community project um, and, and these are spread the spectrum, but the idea is it's something that goes on and benefits the community. Uh, one big thing uh, to me and I, well, to all of us now is, is the recreation, and, and so when we're thinking about different project ideas, um, when I threw this one out there, it really, um, really struck home. So. Our proposal, um, project proposal, is a, is a connector trail that would link uh, Calendar, Grand Rapids, Lake Wazicha, uh, to the um, trail system of Wisconsin Rapids. And that's why we call it the Wazicha Rapids Connector Trail. And the uh, idea being that the trail will, um, will travel along a, a segment about three and a half miles long that is currently um, only used in the winter, winter time, uh, the snowmobile trail. Um, but it's an entire corridor. It used to be an old railroad back in the day before long before. Uh, I don't even lost my <laughs> whatever that was. Um, but it's an abandoned railroad, a uh, railroad right away um, that is entirely owned by the city of Wisconsin Rapids. Um, so it's uh, it's just an asset in the community that I think is, is really has a lot of potential, and that's what we're looking to. Uh, to get out of it. Um, I guess a little story about, you know, I live uh, just on 64th Street south of Whitrock, and uh, when we moved out here, uh, been about seven years or so now, um, you know, driving the, riding the kids around the park and that sort of thing, when they got older, we tried to go into, you know, Wisconsin Rapids to go to, you know, now we go to a Rafters game or ice cream or whatever. Um, 
problem I found is with the little kids, it's really difficult to um, basically get from the park to the city. Um, you know, I mean, you've got the you know, intersection out here and then down uh, here on 48 that, yeah, for an adult, not a big deal, but when you're traveling with kids, you know, five, six, and, you know, 10-year-old kids, it's not the, the easiest situation. Um, so if we, that and also there's really not a clearly defined route to connect it to. Um, so again, that's where our proposal comes in. We get uh, kids and everything off the street and onto a trail for uh, be a safer, safer connection. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to mm -hmm. chime in, William? I think it's just going to help a lot too with bicyclists and walkers with these intersections with this trail connecting. It's going to be a lot safer for everyone. We've had interest from like um, the Lincoln High School the cross country team. They can run that trail then instead of having to run on all the busy roads. So it'd be a much safer route for them. Um, the, like the BMX club um, has talked about, they have a lot of people that come in for their national tournament and stay at Lake Wazicha, so it would be a great in inlet for them, you know, safe out in. Um, yeah, so, um, so right now, I mean, we're not asking the town for anything. Um, it's mostly uh, uh, informational. Uh, we're really in the, uh, the beginning stages of things I kind of, you know, joke of, uh, and we just, Talk to people, and, and, and nobody has said we're, we're, you know, idiots for bringing this idea up. So uh, we'll keep moving forward <laughs> and see where we get. Um, but I, I think uh, again, I think it'll be a, it would be a tremendous benefit to the community to use something that, uh, um, you know, it's it's an asset that's sitting there being underutilized. And probably our timeline would be um, we're, right now. We're working more with the city to come up with formal agreements uh, to proceed with our project and uh, we're we're getting some bids on road base to, to lay on that area and working with the different trucking companies in town um, you know we're of course looking at grants and looking at ways to raise money um, we're going to try to have a big celebration and a grand opening type of a thing so it's probably going to be if we're lucky, maybe next year we could possibly get this work done and, and kick it off. Mm -hmm. But um, it's dependent on money. <laughs> but then, so. Mm -hmm. so, any questions from out the community? Go ahead. Shirley? Yeah, um, how are you going to, are you concerned about getting across 48th Street and then 32nd for the trail? Or have you come up with um, any? I think, uh, I mean, at 32nd, I guess they're because you know, it's kind of an angle so we'd have to work with the city and the town to figure that out whether maybe we just kind of curve the path up along 32nd to meet the existing blacktop there would be one option instead of kind of you know going diagonal um at 48th um you know it might be probably something where you'd have to look at signage or you know painted crosswalk or something along those lines um no overheads yet the yeah, no, no, no. no. Um, and actually, I, I, we're looking at a very minimalist design. I mean, um, uh, you know, we don't want any, uh, you know, we're not looking at blacktop uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, one being obviously because it, it doubles as uh, you know, snowmobile in the wintertime, hopefully. This year didn't work out that way, but, um, but also talking to runners. Uh, you know, you often notice that, you, you know, even along the, the park there where you've got a nice blacktop, you know, they run in the grass because it's, mm -hmm. it's harder on their joints to run on blacktop. Um, and they'd much rather just run on, you know, like a crushed limestone or something like that. So, um, it, and, you know, cost is, you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot cheaper to do, a, you know, a crushed gravel versus, you know, paved uh, surface, so. Any other questions quick for Go ahead, William? Yes, uh, I have. Well, one of the sources I, I think is the Green Trail in Wisconsin, or in, in Stevens Point, uh, uh, and because they all they want to hook up even with Wapaka. Mm -hmm. And today I spoke to the mayor of, uh, he used to be the mayor, he's now with the Stone Company, Mayor Alberson. Oh, yeah. And uh, he said, you know, there's a good chance to get together uh, on this because it would yeah. be great to hook up to that trail too. And also his, 
how will you present this to the county? Could the county get involved? Um, yeah, actually, so we got a few points there. Um, one is, uh, yeah, I, I went to college at Stevens Point. I used the Green Circle. It was, it's great. Um, and now, right, you can, I think it's, I don't know, 30 miles. It might be even growing a little bit, loop around the entire city. It's awesome. Um, so working, you know, planning and zoning office where, I, where I'm at, um, I do know that there has been talks years ago about uh, connecting the city, you know, the, the two cities along the river somehow. I have no idea how that would ever happen, but that's, um, you know, kind of a, a different matter. But that would be, that would be great if you can do that. Um, I was speaking on, on this, uh, as far as connecting it, uh, a few people actually know that, you know, that trail, I mean, when you go, um, you know, over by the mall, by the railroad there, uh, that trail there, goes all the way down into Coosa. You know, so really, I mean, you could get on your bike, and I guess you can do that now, but it'd be nice to be able to do that on a, on a trail, off-road trail, um, you know, from Grand Rapids, go all the way down to Nakusa. Um, also with, uh, I, I saw in the news, and I know most are probably aware of the, uh, um, uh, in beer in there, the, the road reconstruction and the trail going up, up uh, in that direction along the river. Uh, so, you know, it, it really is connecting all the communities and, uh, you know. Yeah, did you have some? Yeah, just go um, back. Oh, I'm sorry, I have one more thing. I forgot. Um, I, I was, uh, last week, Thursday, I was at the, uh, the Hearst Committee, the Highway, um, oh. the Highway Infrastructure Recreation right. Committee. Um, so I have been there, uh, talked with um, Chad and uh, uh, Doug Pazanow at the highway, um, and, uh, Again, those were really just kind of informal talks to say, you know, this is our project idea. Um, and, uh, yeah, they said it was, you know, again, great idea. I don't, we're really early, early yeah, yet early. to know exactly, you know. Well, the um, good thing about that is Al Bry is the chairman, uh -huh. and Al Bry, you know, they got their trail up into Marshfield yeah. and through all that, and it was through Al Bry, where he's the chairman of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, and you have four supervisors in the town of Grand Rapids that represent on the county board. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, and there was, a, a, what Bill was talking about, is a, a trail, kind of a similar idea, where the uh, village of Hewitt um, uh, wanted to connect their uh, uh, park recreation area um, with a trail uh, to the city of Marshfield's trails. Um, and so um, the construction is going on this summer. Yes. To connect yes. those two, so you'll have. Uh, All right, I'll take one more question, Dan, and then we. Real leave. quick, um, now in the winter it would be open for snowmobiles, right? Correct. Right. Otherwise, it would be non motorized use only? Correct. Mm -hmm. that, that's what you're. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so to do that, we could either. Um, you know, the park has used, you know, big stones um, as one way to do it, um, you know, to keep motorized uh, traffic out in the summertime. Um, or uh, you can modify the gates, um, you know, mm -hmm. so that you can, you know, I don't, I don't guess know what the technical term is, but, you know, so there'd be en enough uh, width through there. Sure. Uh, you know, for okay. a couple bikes and that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7 is approval of uh, member changes in the fire department. We have two new officers that are moving. I, Mike Andre and Doug Dynan, I move that we approve those. I'll second that. Motion already second that. Any discussion? No. So, so this isn't an increase in officers, this is just replacing some officers? Uh, yes, uh, Captain O'Day is dropping down and filling up. And there was one additional safety, one additional officer uh, added to the structure, uh, which is moved off to the side where you see Mike Sajakowski. Did I get that right, Mike? Is now off. Sajakowski, ski is fine. <laughs> yeah. He's off to the side, and you got the leadership schedule right below you now. And so the two additional officers are Andrea and I. Any further discussion? I have a question. Um, so. Currently, then, from this um, drawing, I see that we have four captains and then seven crews. Is crew six and crew seven then in addition to two of these other ones also, or no? The crews are the members. Those, those are the members. Right. And They're assignments. That. Those are, those are uh, fire department members that are assigned to work underneath them. Okay. So it's kind of like, I'm your leader, you follow me. 
Okay. Sure, and I just it just breaks them up finer. Okay, I did not know. Um, it doesn't indicate like um, how many are on each crew. No, and that can fluctuate with staffing. Okay. Just kind of divides them up. You get anywhere from five to seven. Mm -hmm. Crew members. Perfect. Anything else? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? Two. And we had a uh, resolution uh, uh, number 2015-12 to create a new ordinance, ordinance 68, governing truancy. Was there a lady that wanted to speak to that? Um, I don't have to speak to that. I'm here just to answer questions if anybody has any. Okay. Okay, Bill's made a motion to approve. Is there a second? second. Man, a second. And what this uh, came from is the chief had a request from the school that's across the street for us to uh, support their efforts to keep students in class and to develop an ordinance that would uh, effectively uh, mark them truant and have some ability for our staff or other staff to correct the situation if they can. And any other questions on it, Bill? Do you have a question? So the chief board. So it's not just for that school; it's for any school that would be in the town of Grand Rapids, correct? Yes, it would be for any school. So, so if with the governor's new budget, if somebody uh, opens up another school, regardless of what it is, this would cover that because it would be under the that, school. That's correct. Yes, in the Thank town you. of Grand Rapids. Yes. Ready? Um, how do you propose? Um, a person um, under 68.3, the school attendance required. How do you monitor homeschooled? The that district, was one of my questions. Our school district monitors homeschool. If somebody drops out of school or leaves school, they must be enrolled in and reported as a homeschooler through the state. Mm -hmm. That gets reported to us. We check on that. If they're not, then we would pursue the truancy. And this, mm -hmm. essentially, we have a lot of things in place right now to address truancy. Most of, many of our students have had issues with school and do not like school, so mm -hmm. avoid it at all costs. Mm -hmm. um, most of the kids, once they come to us, really are good. Um, there's a different, few different ways we go about it. One is through the county, and that's more through so, human services, where a social worker would be called out to, to work with a family. Um, that we don't believe will work for all, and sometimes they need, you know, just the the citation or somebody visiting them might, you know, we we'll monitor it. We don't see us calling that often, um, but it's just nice to have one extra um, extra avenue okay. to go to. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. My name is Carrie Silent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Very not. Uh, motion to approve as presented. Was made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Here we go. We got you out by time. Thanks. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, item 9 is approval of resolution 2015-13. It's in opposition to the uh, governor's budget item, which uh, was implementation of countywide assessments in Wisconsin. And uh, Kathy was so gracious as to read it for us. Resolution 2015-13. Whereas the Department of Revenue proposes to change from municipal assessment to county assessment that requires 100% assessment of every property every year, and whereas this proposal will cause an unfathomable waste of taxpayer dollars through extraordinary cost increases, and whereas citizens will only be able to access a few Board of Review proceedings throughout an entire county, which significantly decreases the ability of local knowledge to create accuracy in the assessment process, and whereas towns, cities, and villages are no longer in control of their own costs because the county will just send them a bill. And whereas the proposal is an unprecedented intrusion into local government by requiring the state to suggest a salary range for their assessment director and work with the county to set a county budget and number of employees. And whereas the Department of Revenue has cited assessor problems as part of their rationale, but has never revoked an assessor license despite having the authority. And whereas over the last five years, the Department of Revenue has already required additional work and detailed information from assessors to improve the process. 
and whereas this pro proposal kills private sector jobs and grows public sector jobs. And whereas the Department of Revenue cites that Wisconsin is one of few states that has municipal assessment, but forgets to note the strong leadership of Wisconsin citizens, our state's dedication to local input, and the simple lack of town government in many states. Now therefore be it resolved that the town of Grand Rapids Wood County does hereby oppose the implementation of county assessment in Wisconsin and asks for the proposal to be removed from the budget, and be it further resolved that towns are and have always been willing to work with the state of Wisconsin, fellow local government groups, and other stakeholders to continually improve the assessment process. Now, obviously, uh, I didn't write that, of course. Uh, this is res resolution was from the Wisconsin Towns Association uh, at their recommendation. Uh, we also heard from uh, the Wisconsin's Assessing Association group, they are opposed to it. And, and Bill uh, was on the Wisconsin in the legislative and judicial um, committee meeting last week, you're proposing an ordinance, or this week, I should say, proposing an ordinance that the county voted against it, and, and also Wisconsin Counties Association has voted against it. Now, why all the excitement in, in simple terms that uh, uh, it's been noted that at an average uh, assessing cost is $31.92, I believe, in a community in Minnesota. Uh, our own assessing costs right now for 4,152 properties is $3.90 each. <laughs> so from $31 uh, to $3.90 would be difference now. If this goes through, what would happen is the county would take over the assessment. They could have charged us only 95% of what our last year's bill was. So our $16,000 assessment bill would be the county could only charge us that. The county's costs would go extremely high because of the imputation and the, and the study from the Minnesota. And what would end up doing at some point in time, the county would put, they have to put that additional cost onto the county taxes. So why Grand Rapids would be saving, the county would not, and who is the county? It's we. So that's, and Jason, do you have any discussion on that? Um, the $3, is a, that's not obviously 100%. That's at 95, 90%? That's, that's just a maintenance contract. That's a maintenance contract, yes. What, when was the last, this is just, I guess, my curiosity too, so, um, because I, I've, yeah, um, 2006, if you're asking. Yeah. The last when was the last? How much was that for? For you know. I wasn't here yet. I was, but I don't remember the I'm, cost. I want to say I, like 60. Yeah. I, I was going to say 70. It was between 60 and 70 thousand was the full assessment. Yeah. So, um, but we've been, you know, our our assessor group that we've been working with has been able to keep ours up because he updates all the, uh, obviously, sales records and makes the necessary changes. Uh, we've actually been very close to that 100% uh, to that 95% to the 98% for as long as I can remember. Bill, is that about right, too? Yes. Yeah. yeah well, you know, you have to be within 15%, mm -hmm. and then you go that year, say, say you're at 83%, and then the next year is what will happen is the state will hold up rebel on you. I, I was assessor myself, and I'll tell you what, you don't want to lose <coughs> control. Sure, they got a few bad assessors out there, but they got the testing and the certification to go after, not the towns and paying more money. So I'm 100% in favor of this. Uh, I'm talking to some county and some county officials. They think this might be good for counties. It's more revenue for counties. And I say baloney, let's keep it local. Any other discussion here? Not uh, in favor of the resolution. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve oh, resolution 2015-13. Thank you. And I will second it. And motion by Kathy, second by Patty. Now, any other discussion on the board level? Yes. Go ahead, Patty. Um, there was a spelling error. Copy it right there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we'll get it corrected on the final. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. I have an aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. All right, back to my uh, handy dandy agenda. 
All right, uh, this would be item number 10, approve uh, officers, officer iron attendee instructor training in Madison, March 16th through the 20th, 2015, $857. And Chief, this is in your budget, correct? That's correct. You moved on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, uh, training uh, school for uh, just an iron. I'll second that. Uh, motion down, uh, second bill for either discussion. Chief, no, 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 um, when it said that it was to conduct a scenario based training, could you explain that's part of the curriculum? Can you explain that right. to me? This is the first step in the process of an officer wanting to become certi as a certified instructor in all the different categories that training the standards has set up out there. And basically what this does, uh, it, it's kind of the basic, and what, it, that, what you're talking about there, it allows him to, as an instructor, set up scenarios for, for whatever training he's conducting or whatever training he's certified in. It, it gives him some uh, information and background and, and uh, on how to set up scenario-based training where it's just not uh, going out and shooting or, or practicing uh, defense tactics or whatever, where they actually set up uh, scenario-based where it provides more realistic training where you have actors and role players and things like that to help you better learn from based on real-life situations. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none. Uh, we had a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. I had a lab approval of fire chief one attending incident command training at Indianapolis April 24th and 22nd to 24th. I believe he's going down with a group of four. Total cost is within his budget of $470. I'll make motion to approve the training request. Motion second. bill, second. Kathy? Mm -hmm. Any cut discussions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. I'm an aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, item uh, 12, uh, discuss pricing codes received from Uniform Services Public Works. We got that handout to, uh, handed to you just a minute ago. <coughs> What's a minute ago uh, before the meeting? Uh, the very left side is what we currently are paying uh, through Universe. Uh, the uh, quote that came in from Universe is in the uh, second column. Uh, we also asked for prices from T&K Services. Uh, the third column, and I think if you follow my math, the, the middle column, which is the new quote from Universe, is by far, far cheaper than the GNK services. My recommendation uh, would be to stay with Universe. If somebody is yeah, think along the same, I'll second that. Okay. Three or five year. Uh, I'm in favor of a five year contract, along with if you're holding it to a two percent increase. So I'd make that motion to do a five-year contract uh, with a maximum of 2% increase per year. Kathy seconded that? I did. Dan, did. I'm sorry. Any further discussion? Good, no? I, I asked Dan before the meeting, and uh, I said, I, I, I just thought, well, we, we have that wash machine over at the fire station, and he said, that's not a wash machine, that's where the equipment no, no, no. It, it, it's a wash machine, but it's for turnout gear. Okay. It, it's a chemical. Yeah, it's it's not your standard washing machine that you do it. I just thought we could make some wash women on it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have a room for a clotheslines, Bill. Okay. All right. So this is um, this is covered by a current budget. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it is lower exactly than it less. is currently. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to. We're going to be in surplus. Oh, bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 I'm an aye opposed. No opposed. Item 13, uh, discuss uh, possible 2015 road projects. Um, and the crew spent some time. We looked at the, uh, uh, the state maps or road data that we have to put on, plus inspections, and I know we haven't had uh, much chance for anybody to probably look at these based upon the road uh, road still being covered. Uh, but roads we're looking at for the 2000 would be Auburn Avenue 
and the cul-de-sac that would be off of 32nd Street. It's about 640 feet. Uh, 50th Street South is which is to the uh, north east of here. Uh, that's a gravel road that's 635 foot long. Uh, 56th Street, which is in the same area, it's 1,020 foot long. Uh, we may add an additional 290 foot because that would be right from, I believe, that Strodum. What's that last road over? Strodum. Strodum. To the end, and I'm not sure if we would uh, have that. We could have more discussion later. Cherrywood Court uh, is in the uh, subdivision where Plantation Court is, and Plantation Court is the uh, cul-de-sac that we purchased, uh, or actually was given to us by Larry Koopman, and then we've uh, graded it, got it ready for uh, possible work this year. Uh, Cherrywood Court is in that same subdivision, and we own that cul-de-sac. Uh, we'd like to do those two cul-de-sacs. Uh, Cherrywood, uh, we did have some discussion with uh, some of the owners about uh, not removing all the trees. Uh, uh, Rick and I reviewed the day and we, possibly we could, we'd be fine with moving seven of the trees and maybe there'd be a few trees that could stay in the center, but we could probably address that later. Then the uh, sixth project would be Brandwood Drive, Rosemary Circle, and Abbey Lane. Uh, Brandwood Drive is the main road in, that's 1,086 feet. <coughs> Rosemary Circle is a uh, 655 foot circle in our cul-de-sac. Abbey Lane is a 1240 foot uh, section. And uh, we wanted to review Brandwood, which is the main road in, whether we do it at three inches versus the two. Uh, project number seven would be Blueberry Lane. Uh, two options there, one be, would be to pulverize a fine grade, and that's a 1440 feet. Uh, option two would be to scratch and wedge coat and then pave it over with that. So those would be the five projects that I would like to, or the, not five, but the uh, projects that we'd like to have on the table. Uh, if the board wishes to look at these, all I would really like tonight for is to get approval to go ahead with uh, Plantation and Cherrywood because we got a lot of work to do there first. And if you wanted to review the <coughs> projects uh, and have them at the April meeting, that would be fine. But if you're okay with them, we'll go ahead. We have pricing ready from the county. Uh, it will fit within our budget. We have not received the quotes from American Asphalt yet, but uh, typically they're higher, but these would fit in our, our budget for this year. So whatever your board members' wishes are. So with the Cherrywood Court, um, The seven trees, did you speak to him in regards to the seven trees and he was fine with that? Well, he actually, <coughs> when I had last two conversations with him on the phone, he said if you can leave some of the trees in there, you'd like it. And Rick and I looked at it today and we could probably leave a few. It's hard to say how long they're going to live because sometimes when you serve ruts around other pine trees, the other ones are going to go. These, uh, these are at full growth already. They're at full harvest time with these trees already. They're not likely to live much longer with a a few more years and they're going to get the, the mic bite and mm -hmm. be dead anyway, so, but we could go ahead, Bill. I, I, I like to see their request in writing, you know, that this is what they want. I mean, we own both of them and this is what we want. You know, they can say, oh, we, we really didn't want them. Why? And, you know, I, I'd like to look at all of these. Right, that's why I'm asking you to, if you want to look at all of them, uh, I'd like to go ahead on the, getting going on the two projects. Is this um, going to take the place of a road ride? Uh, you could take, we can take a road ride anytime. But, no, I think we should. I, I think we should take a road ride and yeah. look at these and talk about them. And the, the problem we had on road rides is it's pretty tough for us to get six people in a vehicle and we all here. Uh, I would suggest to you that I would take uh, uh, one or two at a time, or Rick will take one or two at a time and go out and look at these roads and and do that way. That way you can have a much better conversation than talking through the back, because I know sitting in the back of vehicles over the years when we went on these, it was pretty tough to understand what the front seat was talking about. Mm -hmm. So we we could do it that way. I mean, I, more than when Rick is available at any time, I'm available at any time, and I'll let him retire. To, 
Well, it makes sense to do that as well because it saves up meeting per diem by us just taking our responsibility and going out and checking the roads. So. Anyway, then, you know, if, if, if you'd give me the authority to go ahead on getting uh, cherry wood and, and, and uh, plantation going, I, I could meet with, there's actually only one person that's called me on the cherry wood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I can have conversation with him if he's okay. We can just go ahead on and get it prepped because we really would like to keep, cut the trees out there before too much longer. Is plantation the court? The other gentleman that was at the... Yes, that's Larry that had the maps out here. Yeah. Or it's Larry that was, Hoopman, that was his, his one in there. They're fine with us there. As far as the cherry wood corn, mm -hmm. um, what about, you know, I mean, obviously we, we don't know if those trees are going to make it or not. Do um, you see any of them? Roots, root base growing out and causing road issues down the road? It's hard to say. I mean, they might not, and again, they, they might pop up. I've got some roots on, on 78th Street that's right by my house that is coming up through the surface now. Mm -hmm. And those pine trees are 10 foot off the road, that's all they are. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they can, they can tear it up, but I guess we can, we can, uh, you know, appease the gentleman and, and leave something in there, or we can, uh, you know, we own them, we can take them all down. I mean, I'm trying to work with the community as much as much yeah. as we can. I think we, Rick and I, pretty well thought we could take a chance on them. On the one, leave, uh, leave the center. How soon would you want to get going on it? We'd like to get the trees in the next few weeks here out of there. You know, before we get too much. What kind of trees are they? Pines. Oh, okay. They're straight. Hopefully, they'll fall in the right spots. <laughs> Are we meeting anymore this morning? Um, don't have to, but I guess we could. So, what's your wishes? I have no concern about you starting the, what work needs to be done within the cul-de-sacs of those two cul-de-sacs and then holding over the approval of the entire project till April so that we can each have an opportunity to go and look more closely at each. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I would I would like I said I without looking at that cherry wood court myself as far as I your recommendation about leaving some of those trees. I guess Rick too if, if you guys think that that's okay. Is that was that a motion guy? I will make that a motion. Yeah, and a second by second it. It. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? Opposed. No. Two. Oh, not opposed. All right, but I will get with you and see when we can take a trip. Okay. All right, uh, on the next page, uh, where's that on the back of one of these? Uh, we are required to. Uh, in order to, to uh, request any what's called TRIP funds, which is partial state funding for any road projects, to have a five-year repair plan. So this is a repair plan that we put out. It does not mean they have to be done in any order, or it does not mean that they, any of these have to be done. It just means that in order to request any funding for any project, we have to have a five-year plan in writing. Uh, last year's plan was the last roads that we did, so that stopped the five-year plan. That was done. So the 2016 proposed project would be Lake Avenue from 42nd Street all the way to 23rd Street, which would we would mill an uh, inch and a half or two inches of surface off of it and uh, re-blacked off it from, from then on. Uh, it's about $200,000 worth of project. That would be one that I would be, uh, uh, if this proposal passes, that I would pitch to the Wisconsin Wood County Towns Association as our project for this year, or for next year, for 2016. Uh, 2017, 64th Street from Wood Avenue to the railroad tracks, um, pulverized and relayed. 2018, 32nd Street from 
Deer to Town Line, uh, 2019, 32nd Street, Kellner Road to Two Mile Avenue, and Two Mile Avenue to 32nd Street to the city limits. And then 2020, 36th Street South, that's over there by our small business area, and Golf Course Road uh, to Pepperdine Airport, so that would what we propose as a 20 year. These are bigger projects that we put on, on these as possible projects that we would continue to ask or rest request for assessment from for state projects. So questions on those? Yes. Bill? Yes, thank you. Um, and so, so in 2015, we had these things on that plan? No, we, we well, didn't. What role did we say we would do we in had a two, We had a 2014 plan. We yes. did not have a 2015 plan. Everything we completed, actually, 2000, we had 2000, some of those on 2015, but we did them in 2014. So all our 2015 on the plan was, was done by 2014. I believe town line was listed as the 2015. And that was the only one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Questions? Okay. Um, the last time that I don't know what year this was, I just said five year repair plan, town of General, so I'm assuming it was from 2012 to 2016. In 2016, it had Washington Avenue from 48th Street to 32nd Street. Mm -hmm. So um, that... Uh, Washington, 48th to 32nd. Yeah. Uh, that section in there. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going right to Bid State. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't tell you why that's not there. Okay. The I only did, reason I, I don't asked. remember. Okay, the only reason I'm asking about that is because um, I don't know if it was the last town board meeting or the town board meeting before, there was a gentleman here that was asking for an uh, alternative route to get to the industrial park. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if that road would have been spiffed up enough or, you know, handled that 200 load traffic, that could have been an, uh, another alternative route, possibly, you know, because we were just... Um, worried about the, you know, the road conditions of that. So yeah, uh, this, this one was patched up by the city when they put their sewer service through there. Right. I mean, it's still it's still not in um, what what I'd call um, class ten. It's probably a seven or eight, mm -hmm. but you know, it still could be looked at again, and and maybe we can revisit that again yet. Mm -hmm. And we could revisit it yet again for this year's too, and we'll see where, where what, what the cost comes into. And the roads that are on this five-year repair plan, mm -hmm. um, could you explain to me how they were decided um, as far as there's a grading system or? Right, we have a, we have a, it's not tracks, what's the, what's the term, Rick? Whistler. Whistler. Mm -hmm. okay rating system, we have to rate the roads. And these are that, that from there, and they're also from uh, from uh, personal travels by the crew and uh, everything when they're snow plowing, they know the condition of the roads. And, and these are, like I said, these are only roads that are listed that because we need to have a five-year plan, it does not mean that these are the roads we're gonna do. And it's just so that we, I primarily want it on is because I wanted to apply for Lake Avenue for 2016. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's really, bad. really what that I'm looking for. for. I'll make a motion to approve the five-year plan. No second. Once we said to Blake Avenue, Bill, huh? <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> the motion is second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. <laughs> February disbursement vouchers. Any discussion? Yeah. Spent too much? A little? Heat bill should be down as well. Right. Item uh, 16, operator license. We have uh, one uh, for a one year for Jesse. 
Lincoln East at the store, and we have one denial. Is there a motion to approve that? I'll make a motion to approve it. And deny the one. And deny the one. No second. Motion passed. Second Dan. Discussion. And none. All favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Monthly reports. Public works. Uh, the road maintenance uh, equipment's okay, Rick. Yep. Uh, we just completed the replacement of all the uh, nine-inch signs, uh, highway street locator signs that we had to do by uh, federal law, which was required by 2017. We are now complete. Uh, we are working on replacing some of the six-inch ones that are deteriorating. Uh, and some of the speed signs uh, that the reflectivity has gone bad. We, we have to yearly text the reflectivity of uh, signs now and we're starting to find some signs uh, that are not reflective as well. And along with, uh, we have 30 uh, stop signs we're placing this year. And those are all within uh, the budget that we had for that. Um, anything else on questions on road maintenance, public works? Hearing that, we'll move to uh, Planning Commission, Patty. No meeting, eh? No meeting. Last meeting was February 9th, and we're going to be going into closed session this evening <coughs> in regards to the proposals received for the zoning administrator and or the building inspector. Mm -hmm. Public safety? No meeting. No meeting. W. Wood County Towns Association, Bill and I were both there. We had a pretty good meeting there with legislators. Uh, a lot of discussion about uh, the countywide assessment and then and, uh, and, uh, gas taxes, believe it or not. That's odd item again, Bill, right? Yes, and also there was the, uh, the, the other thing was, was the countywide assessment. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then Peter Manley handed out some handouts that I, I don't know if I have. I probably have enough for each one. Um, well, one of the biggest <coughs> things they talked about, if you remember, was Mailboxes. Yeah, mailboxes and uh, street signs. I guess they showed us a video that we, Bill and I, probably seen uh, probably <laughs> more times than we care to about the unsafe mailboxes where people put very solid mailboxes, uh, <laughs> and if a car hits that, it's pretty much a disaster for the car rather than just knocking the mailbox down. So. Uh, uh, we're always on the lookout if anybody sees these atrocious monster sign mail, mailboxes, especially with a plow blade or something attached to it. You know, certainly those are things they want to see off the roads. And county roads, uh, they, they claim they're placing themselves. I probably have spotted a few that I've reported to them too to take a look at because it's pretty more hazardous on the higher the speed, obviously, the higher the hazard of the mailbox. Anything else on there, was there, Bill? No, one of the other things was on the mailboxes, you know, people with anything more than four by four. Yeah. You know, you're really putting road crews in danger. You're really putting other automobiles in danger. And you could be part of a lawsuit on that. I know you can sue anybody you want. Then one other thing was brought up and you did say you would have it on it was the um, the Wisconsin Towns Association Capital Today, which is the 24th. Mm -hmm. I got that down here, but there's some conflicts there. Oh, okay. It's, was that April 24th or March 24th? March 24th. Okay. Did I say April? No, no, you said it right, I, but there's some conflicts that some of us have. Uh, airport Commission? Oh, Airport Commission. That's you? Yes. That you Remember, Bill? Uh, airport over here, yes. <laughs> um, and we talked about lot lease, now we went to, when you lease a lot, now it's going to be 10 cents per square foot which has raised some of them. Some of them, whenever there comes up for a lease lot application, it's going to be raised and that lasts for five years or any year of the contract. Mm -hmm. We also increased, uh, we took a, a lease with uh, Todd Demmerman, who is going to be building a, uh, a hangar on that area. 
and the tenants, and we don't for occupancy of that. Just he hasn't applied to the town of Grand Rapids yet, right. but he's working on it. Uh, the, the, the lease on 22nd Street LLC. Uh, that, that's another lease that we approve. GIS mapping, or we're kind of hoping that, that that's going to be held over, but we're waiting for the county. <laughs> oh, I'll add that uh, once the snow melts, they'll be, we'll be doing the uh, uh, letter, so it's the elevation of data, and uh, new six inch uh, photography. And, and, and what's good about that, you can tell even, I guess, how high a tree is, how high a, maybe a telephone pole or a highline pole is. Can it good? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it, it, it'll give us our height variations around there. We'll and also we went over our hail damage assessment, and that's going, we had some hail damage to it, and what we're going to be using that money for. FBO contract is up in... April and we have extended that for six months. We we want some things our FBO uh, person should be doing, and we're working on a new contract for him. The windbreak planting. We have two people that bid on it. Is what we want to do is put in low growing trees and, and shrubbery along First Street and of course along Two Mile in that area and. Well, I believe one of the estimates was as high as fifty thousand dollars, and another one was shorter and cheaper for seven thousand dollars. So shorter, we're going over trees. that. No, not for shorter trees, <laughs> but for a shorter distance. Oh. So. And how much was that one? It's a seven thousand dollars. Oh. But it was different trees. We're going to talk about that again. The airport vouchers, of course, were approved and. I kind of have with me if somebody wants to see the airplanes were down again this year, this month from last year, because mostly because of the weather. Uh, Bill, t 22 LLC, who is that? What is that? I, I have it right here and I don't know. When I come to that, I should have not said. That, that's somebody that rents a hangar for us and, and, and over there. I just never heard of that company. I, yeah. just, I, 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 I tried I to Google them, I couldn't find them either. Oh wow, well, I, I have information on it. I have the whole lease in there after this, so I'll show you that after the meeting. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure. Hey, you done or you got more? That's it. Okay, uh, public buildings, Patty, we haven't met, have we? No, we haven't met, but we did have a leak starting up there. You can see the ceiling tiles um, stained, so Rick's going to contact um, a contractor, rough repairman, tomorrow and um, have them come out and take a look at it. But from what they can tell, um, up on the roof, where we have a rub rubber type of roof, that the seam where they overlap seems to be where the issue is happening. That's only, what, five years old, maybe? I believe it was replaced. Ten? When you're, is it yeah. 10 already? 2000. 2010. Oh, 2010. Yeah, so just five years old. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there's some warranty. Huh? Right. Economical development. We did not meet. All right. Cycling solid waste bill. Anything else? Oh yes. So we had a meeting. We're working on the um, the annual report, and we kind of give ourselves permission that uh, some of us could work on that together and just strictly talk about the report and, and design it. And one of the other things was is that it wasn't on the agenda, but in the minutes it indicated that. I was coming to this meeting to get permission to have two choose to reuse uh, events in 2015, and I would like that put on the agenda for next, uh, next month. Okay, we'll get it on. Sorry. Mr. Chair, Go ahead. quick question for Bill. Um, the choose to reuse, so I've heard that TV's cost will go right up, up quite a bit, but then I've heard that this spring, after all, it won't be, it won't be up after, um, you know, what... Right. What if what have you heard? What is the direction of what TV yes. cost? The prices I get, and this is for choose to reuse events only, and it comes from Marshfield, who does it for, who does this for ODC, and TV twenty seven inch, below twenty seven inch is going to be ten dollars, and monitors above twenty seven inch or twenty seven inch and above 
is going to be $25. Wooden consoles, projectors, and floor standing TVs that are very heavy are $40. And non-TVs and computers will be $10. Okay. And full-size copiers will be $55. Anything else? I, I would just add, you know, and it was mentioned at our meeting that um, we do this for ODC because it's employment there. I know you can take these TVs to, from what I understand, you can take them to, what is it? Uh, Best Buy. At that Best Buy and, and just drop them off and back. I haven't got that permission from them. And, and you go in store and they'll give you some money toward another TV or a 20% off or something on it. And, and that's fine if you want to do that or if, like they do it in many municipalities and in the county parks, you can dump them in the parks and everywhere. We have a thing that keeps ODC uh, contract going with this people up in Marshfield that do it. So that's why we have these prices. And they're much higher if you do not utilize the Choose to Reuse program. Legislative committee, uh, we'll be meeting a couple days from now, uh, working on a ordinance that would uh, manage uh, events within the town that would utilize uh, any of the town roads, highways I should say, that's the term we're supposed to use. Uh, uh, the, we have a draft ordinance that we've been working on and we will update it with an application process we have drafted up, nothing, nothing final. Uh, we could take that ordinance and draft it into the whole ordinance which we talked about. It would be all other events, but we'll talk about that when we get to legislative. And the other thing is emergency powers for uh, the acting chairman or the town chairman, depending on any type of crisis. Those are the only two things we have on legislative coming up. Uh, personnel, Kathy, anything? No meeting. Okay. Reports from individual board members. I guess I'll go to the left first. Patty. Nothing, thank you. Dan. Um, just, just to make a note that uh, this past week we did have one of our uh, former firemen I forgot to and uh, fire chief um, pass away. And I guess I'd just like everyone to keep uh, his family in our prayers. He was a um, very big part of our department for many, many years. And um, Jeremiah Murphy. Yeah. What is Jerry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just like to meet him. Thank you. Bill? No, I don't have anything at this time. Thank you. Chris, you got anything on there today? No. No good uh, interest stories? High interest going higher? I don't have anything. <laughs> Kathy? I only had the comment about Mr. Murphy and his family. Okay. Yeah. Well, I do. Uh, we received a letter uh, a month or so ago from uh, David Cook, who lives on the other side of uh, Quinnell Creek. He's asked the town to help him clean the creek out. Uh, I'm going to refer that to the DNR with the board's permission. Uh, I don't think it's our area to go into and I think if there's some issues we should probably talk to the DNR first. I'm going to push that to the DNR and see where it goes from there. Um, I did attend a, a meeting uh, along with uh, Fire Chief Bone. Climate and health impacts uh, by the Wisconsin Department of Health Services down at the Wood County Courthouse. Uh, Bill was there for a few minutes too. Um, discussing health uh, concerns and how to make uh, our communities more sustainable for the future, uh, noting that there is slight climate changes like a degree and a half over quite a few period of time and wanting uh, uh, the various political and uh, community associations such as police, fire, the town chairmen's and other interested parties to get together and try to decide to how to uh, put together some kind of program that uh, uh, assists the emergency government and tell people how to get prepared, I guess. Long and short, it was about three hours of, of a lot of uh, talk, and I, 
I think the answers that we all came up with were probably all answers that emergency government already had. So I guess we're referring it to them to see where it goes from there. Uh, let's see. Uh, March 24th, that's Capital Days, Bill. And if anybody wants to go, here we go. Uh, however, I'm sure there's probably three members on this board that will probably be staying in town because that is also the uh, uh, River Cities Community Asset Access uh, Studio. Uh, I don't want to call it a, it's not a debate, it's a forum. At 6 o'clock we will be participating along with, uh, hopefully, the rest of the candidates that are running for town board also. Well, if anybody's planning on going and wants registration sent in, they need to get me the registration forms. Because actually March 3rd was the final day. Yeah, he did. Uh, I did they extended, I think they extended it, or, it to the 15th. Now. Yep. But we do have a vehicle that they could take too if they want to go in it. So. But you still need to register yep. down there. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in contact with all the legislation numerous times. Uh, and just recently again with uh, Scott Krug. Uh, he's there's some issues going on uh, with EPA wanting to do some more regulation on outdoor wood boilers uh, and Adams County is looking at some issues of how to manage it. Uh, I did provide to him the 2010, I believe it was, study that 2011 uh, wood smoke study test that we had done here that was performed by an association so he's got, he has that full 62 page report. And he said he didn't get it all read yet, but uh, other than that, I don't have anything else. Uh, let me move to uh, the next agenda item. Bill's already spoke to the one he wants. Uh, item 20, again, public input. People wishing to speak to the board and for one more time for a couple of minutes each. A little bit until 16 minutes. Anybody else wish to speak tonight? On ahead. Uh, on your road trip, I don't know how you go about doing it, but I suggested before that, and I don't know how many of these are surfaced and how many of them aren't, but at least on the surface under the blacktop roads, if you catch them when it's like after a rain and it's starting to dry off, and then walk the road, then you can see every crack in that thing, the water stays in the crack, it's a darker color. Um, I'll speak for Blueberry Lane, there's all kinds of spots, I mean you drive down the road, it don't look too bad, but you get out and you walk down the road and there's all kinds of spots that are broken up in pieces like that and they're all over the place. And, and Arnie, I wasn't, I, I, I was busy writing that. I didn't hear what your proposal was for that. It was a... I think we have two ways and we haven't decided which one. One would be to totally grind it up and pulverize okay. it and overlay it, then, okay. then do a new layer over it. And the second one is called the scratch coat where they come in with a, with a coat and we just do about a three quarter of an inch or less okay. scratch crop, which kind of fills the dips of the valley. Yeah. We did that on this end of Grove Avenue from probably about 68th or 70th. Yeah, about six, no, even farther up in that farther wasn't up. It? Yeah. Farther up, uh, from about 70th this way on Grove. That was what we call a uh, fill and scratch. So if you want to look at that sometime, and that was done three, four, or five years ago now. That's one we did like that. So. That would be up in the air as to which way the board and, goes on. And, and the scratch coat, is probably, I'm guessing, might be the more economical alternative. And where I'm coming from is I'd like to be proactive on these things rather than reactive. If we would have done that five years ago or a few years before that, it might have been even cheaper yet. You know. but yeah, unfortunately, we, I know you know, we, yeah. have, we have a total of about $300,000 a year to doing roads. And, a lot of roads in the town. We have 90 miles of yeah, I, paved roads. Yeah, and I'm just, you know, I, I'm just not talking about Blueberry Lane. I'm talking about the township. I'm just. Um. All right. Uh, any other comments from there? Hearing none, we'll move into item 21. The Grand Rapids Town Board is going to move into closed session. Pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute 19.8, spring one frequency, consider employment. Compensation data on any public employee over which the government body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. Discuss proposals received from for a zoning administrator and or building inspector position. And who's going to make that motion? Make that motion. Patty. Madan, roll call vote. Kathy. Aye. Arnie. Aye. Patty. Aye. Dan. Aye. Bill. Aye.